All right, so now we're in front of the Beckstein B212. And of course, this is their top seven foot model. And it's the model that probably gets compared to the Steinway B more often than any other instrument. Uh, and probably specifically the Homburg Steinway B. Um, now, I need to put Beckstein as a brand uh, and this concert line into some context because uh, people who know Beckstein, people who have heard of Beckstein or are familiar uh, with what they've done a century ago or some of the instruments from the Golden Age uh, will need to reintroduce themselves uh, to these instruments. This is not the Beckstein of the 1920s. This is not the Beckstein of the late 1800s. The sound has changed. Uh, the direction of the company has changed. Um, and what we are looking at is now, rather than a company entirely focused on preserving tradition and entirely focused on uh, creating instruments uh, to sound like they used to, uh, this is a company over the last 20 years that has completely turned itself on its head to create a lean, uh, profitable, stable, growing company, uh, super focused on just making unbelievably uh, killer instruments. Uh, so in a way, it reminds me of the way that Steinway was uh, in the later 1800s uh, in New York, kind of constantly um, evolving, constantly pushing themselves. Uh, obviously one of the instruments that was ascending the most rapidly uh, in the high-end market. Um, I think Beckstein very much is enjoying uh, a similar moment uh, in their history, uh, but rather than uh, 120, 130 years ago, it's happening right now, which is pretty cool for those who are shopping for pianos. Um, I have got with me to my left uh, a breakdown of some of the common elements that you'll see uh, not just in the 212, but some of the other models within the Beckstein line. And of course, we're going to be contrasting that with um, the, the Steinway that we were just in front of um, and just pulling in a few other comparisons as well. Let's start with the construction of this piano. Um, if you uh, are still listening from the first part of the video where we were talking about the extensive use of maple um, in the Steinway pianos, uh, what you notice on the C. Beckstein instruments, if you happen to uh, visit a store that has one of these layouts, you're going to notice uh, that rather than uh, the piano being built of one or two types of wood, Beckstein is using um, a wider variety of hardwoods in its uh, rim construction uh, than any other piano currently being offered that I'm aware of. Uh, so instead of just being uh, hard rock maple in the rim, you actually have a really wide variety of woods uh, and fiber lengths um, being uh, built into the inner and outer rim of the piano. Uh, we're talking about birch, beech, um, mahogany, um, and maples, all uh, in there in different lamination thicknesses uh, and pressures. Why use all this different wood? I mean, if Steinway was using all maple and it seemed to work just fine, What's the advantage of using all of this other wood? Well, first of all, um, some of these other woods, even though they're still hardwoods, are actually quite a bit lighter, which means it requires less energy to get these woods vibrating. That's a really important thing. The second thing is, with any type of wood, different hardwoods, because of the, the pore uh, size and the length of the fiber in those woods, will be um, uh, better uh, suited uh, for the transmission or vibration of certain frequencies. Uh, and so by combining a wide variety of hardwoods in a precision format like this, you actually get a rim uh, which can speak in a, in a wider uh, hertz range uh, than something that's exclusively maple. So whereas uh, the Steinway sound has a lot of clarity in the mid-range, a lot of beautiful sustain in the mid-range, um, and you can also get a lot of growl because then you get this mid-range punch in the bass, um, what Beckstein has done is really built on, uh, I think, what Fazioli started experimenting with uh, in the 1980s, uh, which is the use of these multiple types of, of hardwood laminations to get um, an even wider frequency range. Uh, and now they have just taken it to a whole new level. So what you have with the 212, but you also get this with the 192 and the Concert Grand, um, is you get this complete um, membrane all around the outside of where the soundboard would sit. Not just around the rim, but across this uh, front cross uh, member, cross support, that is all uh, rim material. It's all vertically laminated like this, and the entire thing is capable 
of vibrating uh, almost like its own drum, if you want to think of it like this, in addition to the soundboard. So that's the first thing that you really hear out of this piano is uh, when you compare it next to the Steinway, whereas the Steinway, as I said, we have this, this lovely um, mid-range tone, you, when you have the advantage of playing them side by side, there's just a lot more uh, frequency that you're hearing. Um, there's a lot more color and harmonics happening in the high end. There's a lot more color and harmonics happening in the low end. Um, now, this takes a little bit of adjusting to when you're playing because, of course, um, we're not used to instruments producing this much tone. Um, but once you get used to working with all the different colors, you wind up with a, a very much an orchestral palette um, that lets you do things that um, your ear is telling you you want to experiment with, and after a few minutes, I mean, you just settle into it like crazy. It's, it's a wonderful instrument to play. Um, you'll also notice, if you can see this on the camera, um, that the Beckstein, just like the Steinway, also uses a treble bell. So on top of um, all of the um, different hardwoods in the rim, now starting to resonate a little bit better uh, than just an exclusively maple rim, you also are use, have, have this uh, innovation that Steinway produced uh, quite a while ago, now being introduced on Beckstein as well, to even further strengthen the treble. Um, a lot of technicians and performers will tell you, brand aside, that one of the hardest things to get happening really, really nicely is good treble sustain and good treble clarity and projection on a piano. It's a sign of great design. Um, there's, this comes in spades. Uh, so that's another very, very interesting feature. Uh, a third feature uh, would be the bridge. Now, um, the bridge, like uh, the uh, rim, is vertically laminated and capped, just like the Steinway. Uh, and what's interesting is the, the bridge on the Beckstein looks an awful lot like the Steinway. So rather than go way off in the deep end and try something completely new, uh, in that particular case, Beckstein is actually sticking with uh, primarily a maple bridge, maple cap and, and vertically laminated. Um, but the lamination style that they're using is quite interesting. You really have to just take a look at it when you're in front of one of these uh, designs so that you can look at how perfectly matched the grains are in the bridge. Um, another thing I'm going to point out um, with the Beckstein um, soundboard, which is quite unique, and uh, nobody even pointed this out. We noticed this when we were really doing a deep dive on, on some of the training on these instruments a few weeks ago, uh, is that the planks uh, between all of the, or the joints between all the planks um, on the soundboard are actually serrated. So rather than just being, um, you know, one end of plank, another end of plank, and you're gluing those like a standard lamination, um, of course, people who really know Busendorfer well will know that Busendorfer does a tongue and groove. So they they don't do, do just the straight planking like most do. But what Beckstein's done here is they serrate them. So you'll see almost like a jagged uh, three or four back and forths uh, between each one. Now what that means is, you're doubling the surface area uh, that each plank is touching, which means for double the surface area, you can now have a thinner uh, amount of glue and a higher amount of um, um, connection point between those two. So again, the entire point of everything that we're talking about, because I realize it's a lot of detail, uh, but just bear with me here. The entire point of what we're talking about is a piano that is supposed to be uh, capable of responding to very low levels of energy. And so the hallmark to all of this, because as I said, I know this is very technical, but the hallmark to all of this is when you sit down at a B212 and you play a single note, the most uncanny thing happens. And it's the first piano I've ever had uh, this happen to, and it was shocking the first time I heard it. As you play the note, um, there's actually a bloom to the note for about a quarter to a half second, the sound actually grows a little bit as that sound uh, and that and that energy dissipates throughout the whole structure of the of the instrument. It's like the instrument is just sitting there, primed, waiting for the tiniest little bit of energy to be sent through the strings, and then the whole thing just comes alive, uh, and you're getting more back from the instrument than you're putting in, which is uh, such a, a satisfying, exciting thing as as a musician. 
Um, very few instruments uh, will give that to you, regardless of whether you're talking about piano or drums or, or violin. Um, but I do think that some string players can relate to this. A really great violin or a really great a cello um, has this amazing bloom to the tone as well. So that's all we're going to talk about in terms of uh, the Bechstein for now. Um, technically, we are going to get to the playing and we're going to see how this, all this technical stuff actually manifests itself in here. And again, we'll just talk a little bit about how that compares to the Steinway. Um, one other point I will bring up before I forget, uh, because there's some other brands that have made a big deal of this. Beckstein actually doesn't make a big deal of it, but uh, it is uh, verified that this is where they get it from. The soundboard material on the concert series Beckstein's comes from the Val de Fiem. So this is exactly the same uh, wood source that Stradivarius uh, got for his violins. Uh, it's a very exclusive wood lot. It, very few trees come out of this uh, place. Uh, every tree is accounted for um, and there are not very many uh, wood suppliers that have access to that area of the world. Um, and so there's only a handful of instruments, piano or, or otherwise, uh, that have the privilege of using that wood in their instrument. Um, very pleased to announce, of course, that Beckstein is one of them. And uh, uh, you certainly hear it in the responsiveness um, and just how uh, lovely a sustaining tone you can get out of the piano. Um, so we're going to spin around and we're going to get right to some playing so you can hear what we're talking about. And uh, again, thanks so much for sticking around uh, through the video. Hope you're enjoying it so far. as well. 